Yeah, they, they, so they are just following the, the, the natural uh, urges. And, and this is uh, really where I was, I, I was uh, seriously uh, seeing your work going into, I, I don't know if I can call it a revival or a rediscovery of, um, of, the, of the ancient understanding, right? The, the, the actual uh, meaning behind the myth. Right, because being where you are, you have the best resource material ready at your hands to figure out what the whole thing about paganism is. Because when you explain things like uh, psychopathy, and, and, and I will go so far and say the opposite is also true. Um, the empath, the shaman, right, the magical indigo children whatever you call them right they are the opposite spectra of um of of of, of the human psyche right and when i listen to old myth uh, from um from ireland and england uh about um the fae this is exactly what it's about the two courts right um uh the she where you have the two branches one is malicious and, and evil doing and the other is um trickster like but benevolent. Yeah, they're not up to any they're not they're they're, they're very alive. The tricks the trick just the trickster behavior uh, it, it it tells you of their creativity and their imagination. Exactly. You know, and this it, is what if an insight into that and that's and it's like the, what the Buddhists say, wisdom and compassion is the same thing, you know, it's true. And, and, and especially because um, in, uh, I think it was actually in Ireland, um, in, I think it was in Kil Kilkenny or something, um, where they had a uh, comedy festival. Um, oh. A comedy festival, yeah. Um, it's just that the whole, the whole trickster thing, right, the, 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 the benevolent fae. Um, yeah, uh, it's the um, it's the sea court. Um, gotcha. Yeah, that's that's what you see when you sit and 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 watch comedy. When you see stand up comedians. When you yeah. uh, when you when you see a um, uh, one of the comedies for, uh, by Shakespeare, right? This is what uh, the trickster, the empath is. Yes, they can be uh, disruptive, but only in a benevolent way. It is with a good yeah. purpose. Well, if you look at the tarot, the the fool card, he's uh, he's he's off on his journey of his dreams, but he's 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 sort of like he's the fool, and but but also his his naivety is very charming about him. There's a dog stealing his lunch out of his pocket, and he's walking towards a cliff. But that's also in itself it requires an element of bravery. For in order for you to reach your true potential. You must cast off uh, your predetermined and pre, uh, you know, your presumptions about the inherent dangers that may come ahead, and that's where comedy comes from. It takes a hell of a lot of, uh, you know, I I I'm a very funny guy. I, I like humor. I'm 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 I, I'm I love jokes, and that's my day-to-day -day persona. And I find there's something very spiritual in laughter and within humor. And uh, I, I look at the, you look at the uh, the tarot card of the fool, you know, he's he's zero on the on the on the on the, on the, on the, the tarot deck, but he's he also represents the two points of a circle coming back to completion, because uh, he he he's also because he's zero, he, he's also the end and the be, he's also the beginning and the end of the deck, okay. and that's that that his journey is the journey of life really back to the innocence of himself and that's also a metaphor for our society we've gone through the the major arcana of you know the, the tower the the devil and all the you know the the temperance and all the challenges along the way and we're trying to get back to the the fool that we were that innocent child and i see that in so and you see well why do you think so many comedians are so insightful people like bill hicks people like Steve, Steve Hughes. I mean, these are comedians that really, really have something to say. Beyond jokes, 
You know, oh, yes. and this, this, this is an empirical it's not about there. it's not about humor. It's about teaching, no. but teaching through it's, humor. It's about holding the mirror up to the world and saying, "Look how absurd you are." Yes. And that's and when you what and and we as uh, we as normal empathic non disordered people, when we see ourselves in the mirror, we burst out laughing. When the psychopath sees itself in the mirror, it's it's repulsed. Yes. And, and it's, it's funny. And it's, that's what the vampire, the allegory of, and not only the vampire, but many Celtic mythologies of the the evil fairy or the evil entity does not want to see its reflection. Exactly, and and this is also key. If you look at the at the traditional stories, right, the the fairy tales, it's always about these battles between the courts, right, and it's always about how evil always loses in the end. This is not just about the fact that it's a fairy tale, it's about the fact that evil is self-destructive. It cannot win. It's not evolutionary. Evolutionary. It has no ability to create. It's deception. Manipulation and deception is not the same thing as imagination and creativity. It cannot create. It can only recycle. And that's another thing too. It makes me wonder why so many of these uh, these uh, psychopaths in power are obsessed with things like recycling and you know and they claim it's all environmental and everything but it's almost like it's an insight into their psychology as well that they they're obsessed with this this thing called sustainability uh, what, whatever happened to creativity they can't create so they sustain so they're obsessed with sustainability they're not uh, they're not obsessed with innovation and creativity because it's completely foreign to them and and, and one thing that I uh, that I thought about is um, um, when you look at the vampire myth and, and the werewolf myth, and there's always the secret to the whole problem. It's always out there in the open, if you know how to look for it. It's about mm. how psychopathic or predatory existence cannot win. You cannot have a planet only with predators. You cannot have a society with only predatory behavior. What happens if that goal is reached is that everything breaks down or the psychopath needs to change into a butterfly right well, like that with was... the, the highlander thing yeah. he becomes human right when he wins he becomes human because yeah. he's the last one that means that he changes there's no more psychopathy at all in him yeah. so and and the same with the transition in in vampire stories it's always about finding the cure yeah because you cannot have an, a, a society where everyone is a vampire. That would just be, th there would be no food. <laughs> well, it's beautifully shown in that movie, The Wicker Man, <laughs> where, as, where as the food is, you know, the, the, each year the crops are failing because their strains are failing. And each year they increase the sacrifices. And Edward Woodward, who would, it, you're supposed to almost, at the beginning of the movie, see as this sort of, uh, it's actually a, a beautiful movie, that. The, as this sort of like obnoxious Christian, stubborn, close-minded guy and all this. But yet, it's a beautiful story of a man's unconditional love, a, a, you know, a hardcore Christian man's unconditional empathic love for an innocent pagan child that wins the day. Because at the very, even though he burns at the end of the film, he points the finger at Lord Summerisle and he says, your strains have failed because your crops have failed. And it doesn't matter how many sacrifice, but only next year, if, you're, if they fail again, only the king of Summer Isle will be a worthy enough sacrifice. And the look on, on Christopher Lee's face then is like, you can just see he called his bluff because this humble police sergeant who was driven by nothing else he was he was not driven by his christian fanaticism he was not driven by his hatred of paganism he was driven by his empathic concern and compassion for an innocent child which took, which into his fate would have been you know an evil child but he didn't see it he saw it as an innocent child and as he went through this progression and he ended up as the fool but at the very end the fool pointed at the king and brought him down and with that he planted that one seed in the mind of that entire community and you know Lord Summerall knew he was finished and that film is a phenomenal metaphor in that regard also uh, the, the, the fashion transcends dogma all dogma but but this there's, there's another level right um hang on I need a bio break two seconds <clears throat>